Hey everyone, my name is Ed, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to wire an FTC robot. Now, I can't possibly show you how to wire up your robot, because the robot you have is likely different from the robot I have. However, I will show you how each component gets wired up, why I'm wiring it the way I am, and hopefully you can take that knowledge and apply it to your own robot. So with that said, let's get started. So here's the robot that I'm actually going to be showing you how to wire. This robot was based on Go Build as 2024 or 2025 robot design. So it's got an arm that rotates around the robot. It's got this gripper which does a rotation and has these wheels that spin. And I believe this is a fairly representative basic robot that would be good to show you how to wire up. In a previous video, I showed how to wire up the control hub and the expansion hub with a battery and a power switch. If you're looking for how to do that, check out my previous video on that. So let's start with the drive motors. In this case, I have a McKenum drivetrain and they have four motors. One's here, one's here, one is tucked in the strut right here, and the other is tucked in the strut right there. So because I have four motors and only four motor slots on a control hub or expansion hub, I'm gonna take all the drive motors and connect them up to the control hub only. And then my fifth arm motor, I'll connect up to the expansion hub separately. Now let's talk about some terminology. I'm going to call this the front of the robot. This will be the back of the robot. This will be the left hand side of the robot. This will be the right hand side of the robot. So then this motor here will be the front left motor. The motor driving this wheel will be the back left motor. The motor here will be the front right motor and the motor tucked here will be the back right motor. This motor here will be the arm motor because it's going to control our arm. So I'll call this the wrist and this the gripper. So with those terms out of the way, let's get started on wiring up the drive motors. So all my drive motors are GoBuilda motors and they come from GoBuilda with these connectors on them with this matching cable. So you see this end has a little latching clip. This is the end that will plug into the control hub and this little pin connector will connect here. It's very important that we get this direction correct otherwise the motor can behave unexpectedly. So the red is gonna go to the wire with red. Sometimes that wire is red and black and the black will go to black. So to connect these up, we line up the pin and we push. And it's important to push nice and firmly. That connector sometimes does not go in all the way without a bit of force, so you've got to push it nice and firmly. And now we've got a cable with the correct end on it to plug into the control hub. So this cable is for my front right motor. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into port three. Now these cables only plug in one way. You should hear them click. After click, give it a gentle tug. If it doesn't come loose, you're good. Similarly, this will be for my back right motor. I'll plug that into port two. So push, click, Pull, we're good. Next is my front left motor. I'm gonna plug that into the next slot. Again, these only go in one way. So if it's not going in, try flipping the cable around. Finally, this is my cable for my back left motor and I'll plug that into zero. Next, I really like this split sleeving. You can get this fairly inexpensively from places like Amazon and it's split down the middle which allows me to shove wires in here, kind of keep them all bundled together and protected. So what I'm gonna do is open up the sleeving shove in the wires and just work my way down the wire. So now I have a very clean wire loom and I can take that and I can zip tie it down on my robot. That keeps my cables from coming out of the robot where they can get snagged and generally have a bad time. Next, I'm gonna do the motor for the arm and I'm gonna connect this up to my expansion hub and I'll use port zero. Now you'll notice there's a second cable here. What is this? This is called an encoder cable and it plugs into the little port just next to the power wires. And this cable is going to tell us how far this motor has rotated. And we can use that in the programming to make it easier to control this motor. So here's what that cable looks like. It's got these four pin headers and there's actually a slight size difference to these connectors. You'll see this one has these retention pins that are further apart. This one's got these alignment pins which are pretty close together. And the bigger one is actually what's going to connect up to the motor. And the smaller end is what's going to plug into our control hub just below the motor. So here's my arm motor. The big end of the cable is gonna plug into my motor and per usual, it only goes in one way. So make sure you have the large end and make sure you plug it in correctly. If it's not fitting, flip it around. And now the other end of this cable is gonna plug in just beneath where I plugged in my motor. See next to the motor, there is a small port for a sensor right there. That is where this encoder cable is gonna plug in. So we'll take our wire and plug it in. Now next we're gonna talk about the servos and the servos can be a little complicated for a few reasons. Uh, number one, these cables are pretty short. 
Next, it's important to kind of size the servo for the job it's going to be doing. So these are GoBuilda servos, and they have two varieties. They have torque and speed. In this case, I'm using both torque. Now, what does that mean? Well, the, that means the gearing inside of these is kind of optimized for either more force or torque or more speed or to spin faster. The third reason servos can be a little more complicated is because we actually have to set their mode. Uh, well, you can see on the side here, this is called a dual mode servo. I know that's upside down, forgive me. What that means is we can configure these to behave two different ways. The first is rotate to position. So we can give it position and it'll rotate accordingly and stop once it hits that position. The second mode is continuous where we tell it direction and it's just gonna keep rotating in that direction until we tell it not to. Uh, there's a few different ways to do this. Here I'm going to be using this dual servo mode programmer. This is from GoBuilda. Rev Robotics also has a version of this. Now this looks a little intimidating, but I don't want you to panic just yet. This is a little fancy board that lets us program the servos to behave the way we want. It comes with a little battery pack for some double A's. We plug this with the red connecting to positive or plus and the black connecting to negative. So that would be our battery and our servo is gonna connect there. So I can take my servo cable and black is negative, red is positive, white is signal, and I connect it up like that. Then I can select which mode I want. C will be continuous, S will be servo. I want this to be servo mode. That is our set positional mode where it rotates to a position. So I'm gonna plug in my board. We see when we plug it in with power, you'll see all the lights flash. I'm now going to program this servo so I have it connected. I'll set it to servo mode and I'll press and hold this program for a few seconds and you'll see the lights flash when it's all set. So that's the flashing. Next I'm going to program my gripper. So here is the cable for that servo. I'm going to plug it in and this time I'm going to flip the switch to continuous. I'll press and hold program for a few seconds. We see it flash. So that is now programmed to be continuous mode. So now that my servos are set, I've got to route these cables down this channel. I'm gonna route through the hole in the bottom and over to my control hub. And I'm gonna do these one at a time. So the first one I'm gonna do is my wrist. And I'm gonna to need to use an extension cable because my servo cable is simply not long enough. So these typically come in two colors. There's typically red, white, and black to match the servo. And in this case, I have black, red, and yellow. So I'm going to use this one. And the way I'm going to do this is just keep black to black, red to red, and the remaining color is what it is. Push that together, and that's one. And what I've found is I actually need two cables to route the whole way I want. So then we have black to black, red to red, and that one's good. So the way I'm going to wire this is I'm actually going to kind of put it through one of these holes here. And that's gonna kind of keep it out from my gears. What I found is if you get this cable anywhere near pinch points, the cable is gonna get pinched, it's gonna get shredded, and you're gonna have a bad time. So I'm gonna route it through that hole and over to my control hub. And there's a little guide right here that tells you the negative wire goes on the left-hand side, the signal wire goes on the right-hand side, and the power wire goes in the middle. That's the orientation I plug it in there. Next, I'll do my gripper servo, and it's gonna be the same process. I'm gonna plug black to black, red to red, Push that together firmly. I'll take a second extension and match up my colors. I'll take that wire, poke it through the hole in the arm. And I'm going to plug it in right next to my other servo into port 1. So that means 0 will be my wrist and 1 will be my gripper. The next part is of course cable management. So I've got a slightly smaller split wrap. So just like before I'm going to split it open, shove my wires in and just work down the cable. So this is the end of my split wrap. My plan is to basically zip tie it in place here to give it a nice solid anchor point. And hopefully you can see what I've gone for here. I pull this tight, now this end is anchored in place, and all the rest of the, cab of the cabling in the arm, I'm just going to kind of bundle up and zip tie down in place in that arm channel. So here's the final arm wiring. I've taken the cables, I've bundled them up in the center just to kind of reduce some of the slack. And then this split sleeving is actually gonna do two rolls of one, protecting your cables, and two, it's gonna give them rigidity so they kinda go away from my gears. With this arm rotates all the way over, you see that it can kinda rub a little bit against the gear there, but it's protected by the sleeving. 
The last thing I want to do here is provide a quick rundown of the things I've done to kind of tidy up and get this finalized. So number one, you'll see even though I've sleeved these cables, I have also anchored them down with some zip ties. I have some other areas where I didn't have any sleeving, but I had some cables. I've zip tied these down, for example, these are the power wires. In the middle here, I've done some additional zip ties for the cables running between here and here. And this is the gear I was actually talking about. This is perhaps a better view of the gearing that I was so paranoid about keeping our servos out of. Trust me, if you get one of these tiny little servo cables in there, it is gonna get completely shredded by those gears and you're gonna have a bad time. And on the wrist, I've taken some care. It took a few iterations. What I've done is I've rotated it kinda to one limit, then the other limit and just made sure that that cable was not getting stretched. And a lot of this is really going to depend on your robot. Anytime you're rounding a cable near a joint, try moving that joint to its limits and make sure that cable has plenty of freedom to move, but without actually kind of getting into the pinch points. And that's tricky, but you can do it. The final thing I've done here is I've added a little bead of hot glue on that connector there. And there, now that my wiring is finalized, you can see if I give this a decent tug, that's not really coming loose. Previously, these were very, very loose in those housings and they would come off very easily. And if this comes loose, your control hub loses power, your robot turns off, and you're gonna have a bad time. The last thing left to do at this point is to turn the robot on and make sure everything lights up. So we'll see blue light there, blue light there. When that light turns green, we should be good to go. Okay, our light is green, that means this control hub is fully booted up and we're ready to move on to the next step. So now that we have everything wired up, the next step is to go to our driver hub, connect to the robot, and we're going to configure it. And what that means is that we're going to be telling the robot exactly what motor is plugged into what port and the names of all those motors. After that, we'll be able to program. So go ahead and unlock our driver hub, launch the driver station, and we're connected. So I'm gonna to go to the hamburger menu up top. That's the three dots right here. I'm going to click on configure robot. I'm going to create a new configuration. I'll click on control hub portal. And we'll see we have a control hub and expansion hub, which is correct. We have both of those on a robot, so this is good. I'll click on control hub. And these are all the different devices that can be configured on the control hub. I'm gonna to go to motors. And we see we have ports 0, 1, 2, 3 here. Each of these has a drop down menu where you can select the type of motor we have and then the name we can assign that motor. Now, all my motors are Go Build a 5203 motors, so I'll select the drop down and that's going to be Go Build a 5202 slash 5203 slash 5204. So I've gone ahead and added that to each of these ports and now I need to give them all a name. So zero is going to be my back left motor. One is going to be my front left. Two is going to be my back right. And three is going to be my front right. Now we've configured all the motors on the driver hub. So I'll click done. And next I will select servos. Now remember I have two servos on my robot. So I hit the drop down. The first one is going to be just a normal servo. And remember I call that one my wrist. The second one is a continuous rotation servo, and I called that one my gripper. I'll click done, and that's all that I have for the control hub. Next, I'll click on expansion hub, and similarly, I'll click on motors, and now I have to tell the robot what's connected to the expansion hub. So in port zero, I've got to go build a 5203 motor, and I'm gonna call that the arm. I'll click done, and I had no other sensors and servos on the expansion hub, so I'm good there. If I did have something like a sensor, I could click on I could click on digital devices, and similarly, I can tell it what kind of sensor it has on there and go through the same process. I'll click done, I'll click save, I'll give this configuration a name. Again, I recommend something useful. We'll click OK. And our last step is gonna click activate. Now we can go back to this home screen, and right here we see our active configuration as demo. So that's it for the configuration. At this point, all those names that we entered will be available to us in the programming blocks environment, and we can start programming. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. If there's a topic you want to see me cover in a future video, let me know, and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, take care.